guys, today's video is one that I am super excited about because I have created a new tag along with one of my friends here on YouTube. So this is going to be a collaboration with my friend Leora. I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name because I don't want to butcher it, but it'll be on the screen so you guys can go check her out. But I have been friends with Leora now for a while. I want to say maybe like a month or so. And I watched most of her videos and honestly, she is just such an amazing person inside and out. She is so beautiful. Like I can't even like she is one of those people you look at and you're just like wow you're so pretty and then to top that off like she is amazing with makeup she does so many beautiful colorful looks she's the queen of cut creases she does some amazing cut creases i think you guys are really going to love her her personality is just so sweet she's just one of those people that just makes you smile when you look at them and you hear them talk and just the way that she speaks i don't know she's very calming and i really love that about her so i would highly recommend you guys go check her out she is literally the sweetest so like i Said this is going to be a tag and it's going to be a little bit different than your conventional tags because this tag doesn't have any questions it just has like bullet points so you kind of have to make your own questions and answers to this because we try to come up with questions but the thing is with this subject it's just so personable because everyone is in a different spot in their journey if you will on youtube and everyone has learned different things and it's just hard to come up with questions that were going to pull out the answers that I wanted to come out, if that makes sense. I don't know. So we decided to not have any questions at all. And honestly, she was the one who suggested in the beginning that we don't have any questions for this tag. And I was like, no, no, we need to have questions because this is a tag. And then after a while, I was like, you're right. We're not going to have any questions. So it's not going to be any questions. It's just going to be 10 things that I've learned from having a YouTube channel. So if you want to see her answers after you have heard mine, go ahead and check out her channel. I will, of course, link her down in my description box as well as up in the corner. So let's Let's just get into the first thing that I have learned on YouTube. And for me, that is that I have to realize that I am never going to know everything that there is to know about YouTube and that YouTube is an ever evolving and learning process that is going to take a long time to really get good at. Like I look back at some of my videos that I first thought were really good after I had made them and now I'm like, mm, that video was not that great. There were a lot of jump cuts. There were a lot of things you could have done differently. Your lighting looks like shit. My lighting still looks like shit a lot of the time because I don't know what I'm doing. And I have a really hard time with technology and it's something that I will always be trying to get better at and understand because it is hard for me. So this is something that I'm going to have to always work on because I'm never going to know everything and nothing is ever going to be perfect. And that's just something that I have to accept. Thank God I'm not a perfectionist because I would have been so stressed out if I was. I know a lot of my friends on YouTube who are perfectionists and who put so much pressure on themselves to always be perfect and it just looks so exhausting and like I almost feel bad for them but to be fair I mean their videos are amazing but at the same time like I wouldn't be able to do that because I would never put up any videos so I have to just be okay with you know stuff just not being perfect and I'm not perfect and I will never be perfect but I just have to work on improving and that's really all that I can do. The second thing that I have learned, and I want to say I didn't really understand this in the beginning of my YouTube channel because I didn't have a lot of people watching me and most of the people who did watch me had the same preferences and opinions that I did, but this is that not everyone is going to have the same opinions as me and that is totally okay, but apparently in their minds it's not okay. <laughs> Some people are just very stuck on what they believe in and think that everything that they say is right and if you don't think the same thing then you're a bad person and you shouldn't have a YouTube channel and you need to change your opinion and your mind about everything in life and you know what I am myself I have my own opinions and I totally respect that other people have their own opinions as well but I also understand that some people don't agree with that and that they think that the world revolves around them and that whatever they think is the right thing and nothing else matters but that's just how it is you know and I can't please everybody and I'm not even going to try to because it's just going to be impossible because you're never going to be for everybody and I know that I'm not for everybody and that's totally okay and I just want to make sure that I make videos that I want to make and I'm the person that I want to be and if people don't like that then go watch someone else. I mean, honestly, like there are so many people on the internet. You don't need to watch me and I don't need you here on my channel. So 
So the next thing on my list is something that I feel like is kind of obvious, but when you write something in a comment, it's not going to come off the same way as it would if you were to speak it out loud to a person. So mostly I'm just talking about sarcasm here and sarcasm does not translate very well in a written comment. And so many times I've had comments that were supposed to be funny from the other person's view, but when I read it, it comes off as incredibly rude. And then sometimes I've like snapped back and be like, hey, like that's not cool I don't know why you said that and then the other person will reply back and be like oh my god I didn't mean it like that I'm so sorry I was just trying to be funny and here I am like how was I supposed to know that was supposed to be funny because that was not funny in the slightest so maybe if you're going to be sarcastic at least put in a couple of emojis and stuff because sometimes things that you think might be funny might just be straight up rude because I don't know your tone of voice so you know just be a little bit careful with the way that you write your comments possibly because it might come off a little bit different than what you think it does. And so the next thing is something that I've kind of discovered more recently because you know I've had some growth here on YouTube and I have more people watching me now. I have more people commenting on my videos and something that keeps standing out is that people think that writing something they don't like about a video in the comment section is giving me constructive criticism but in reality it's really just a hate comment. <laughs> like if someone says I don't like that I look then how am I supposed to improve on that if you don't tell me what you don't like about it? Like, I have nothing against getting constructive criticism if it's constructive. But if I get a comment saying, I don't like that, and then I will ask the person, why don't you like that? I'm sorry you don't like that. Or, you know, I, I'll try to be nice about it and give them the benefit of the doubt. But a lot of the time they just like, it's almost like they're just shouting out into the world and being like, I hope somebody reads this. And it's not like they're talking to me. They're just like talking to the general public or the, you know, everybody who is reading it. And sometimes I take things personally and I'm like, why, why do you have to say that? Like that is so unnecessary or like someone will go, you wear too much blush or you know what I mean? Like there are just a couple of comments that are like, why did you find the need to say that? And then they'll reply back and be like, oh, I just thought you might want to know that, you know, you could do this a little bit differently. And I don't like when other people wear a lot of blush because it's distracting and so on. But like if they had said that in the first comment instead of just being like, you wear too much blush. <laughs> you know, it's kind of offending and it's kind of rude. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just wish that people who had something to say that wasn't positive would say it in a nicer way. Maybe I'm being a little bit too sensitive, but like there are just things that I wouldn't say to other people the way that people say it to me. And like, I know they're not trying to be rude most of the time because I will reply back and then sometimes they'll apologize and be like, I didn't mean it like that. So, you know, I do try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but sometimes it's just annoying to have to like explain to people what the definition of constructive criticism is because it's not just saying, I don't like X, Y, Z. Like that is not constructive at all. And it just comes off as being rude and hateful and like you're trying to hurt my feelings even though I know you're not. I just wish that people would maybe think about how their comment is going to come across before they click send. Something else that a lot of creators have been talking a lot about lately is the fact that what you guys say that you want in the comment section is not actually the videos or video ideas that gets the most views. And that's kind of frustrating to us as creators because there's a lot of videos that I know that I would like to create that I know some of you guys want to see, but I also know that the majority of my viewers aren't going to be interested in. And I'm mainly talking about like, not necessarily throwback videos, but just like videos where I can use whatever I want and not have to just be constricted to using one product. Like those videos, I know some people really like them, but I also know that they're not going to get as many views. And like, obviously YouTube is not all about the views, but please keep in mind that we spend a lot of time on these videos. So if we can decide to produce a video that's maybe going to perform a little bit better, we're probably going to do that over doing something that's not going to perform as well, if that makes any sense. Because, well, I guess it depends what your goals with your channel is, but I feel like I've been very open in the fact that I want to grow my channel and I'm trying my best to please everybody. You know, I'm trying to please myself as well as trying to please my audience or my subscribers, you guys. So I do try to find a balance and I definitely film videos still that I know aren't going to do that well. 
just because I want to film them, but I can't have that be like the bulk of my channel because that's not going to be the best choices for me to grow my channel. I hope that makes sense. So it's not like I don't want to make the videos that you guys want to see, it's just that I have to find a balance between the videos that I think are going to perform well and the videos that I want to film as well as you guys want to watch. And I feel like that balance is pretty tough to find and it's something that I am constantly working on. And I'm also trying to figure out like, what is it that makes me happy, you know? Like I have to figure out like a middle ground to where I love the content that I am making. I love all the content that I am making. And at this moment, I can genuinely say that I love all of the videos that I am making because they are all super fun to film and they're super fun to edit. And I find that most people seem to really enjoy them and that's exactly what I want. The fifth thing is something that I've actually kind of realized lately and this is that as a creator, when your channel is growing, you need to know your value and you need to know that your time is valuable and that you shouldn't let brands run over you because I get a lot of requests to you know, review different things that maybe I'm not super interested in. I get people wanting to send me stuff that I'm also not interested in and I also got to understand that me getting an eyeshadow palette that I don't really think I will ever use except for for a video is not going to be a good idea for me to accept because number one, it means that I have to film a video that I don't really care to film if I don't like the palette and it's also free advertisement for them. So if someone does want to send me something that I'm maybe not like super interested in but I kind of like, I'm going to ask them for money for that video because sometimes when you do that, brands actually kind of expect you to ask for something and I've really that lately that a lot of brands are very open to considering you know paying you for making content and I think that you shouldn't be afraid to ask or you shouldn't be afraid to get turned down because what's the worst thing that can happen it's like oh well you don't get a free eyeshadow palette like wah wah I'm sure you have plenty in your collection already you know what I mean like don't be afraid to get back to brands and be like, hey, if I'm going to do this video, I wanna get compensated because my time is worth more than just a free product. And it's something that I will definitely be doing more of moving forward. And that kind of goes back to the video that I talked about, you know, making sponsored videos and stuff because obviously when brands pay you, it's going to be a sponsored video because you're getting compensated for the video that you are making. So that's mostly what I meant by saying that there's probably going to be more sponsor videos on my channel in the future than there has been before. And it would mostly be about products that I would have made a video about for free anyway, but since I am asking for money, it's going to end up being a sponsor video instead. This next one actually makes me kind of sad and this is that negativity and clickbait wins every single time and i'm sure you guys as creators as well as subscribers have seen this um, when you see a thumbnail that has either something negative in it or something that really evokes emotion of some sort you're going to be more likely to click on that thumbnail and it's something that just it's really hard for me to make very clickbaity thumbnails i have been trying to improve on just evoking more emotion in my thumbnails. I don't know if I'm really succeeding, but you know, it's thumbnails are something that are so important to our videos and it's the first thing that's going to draw the viewers in and it's the way that we get clicks and views on our videos. So I am way more open to other people's thumbnails now because I understand this and I know how important the thumbnails are in order to, you know, have the videos perform well. So as much as I would like to say that I'm never going to do like clickbait thumbnails, I'm never going to do complete clickbait, but obviously whatever is in my thumbnail is going to be relevant to what is in the actual video. But maybe I will exaggerate a little bit on my feelings about a product if it's kind of bad or if I know I'm going to give it a bad review. Maybe I will amp up my thumbnail just a little bit just to make sure that people are interested in watching the video. You know what I mean? And... <laughs> I know I've probably said this in the past, and I'm like, I would never do clickbait. I hate when people do clickbait. But honestly, if you want to get people to watch your videos, sometimes that's just what you got to do. And it sucks, but it's just part of the game. And I want to play the game too. I want to be part of the game. I want to win at this game. I'm a very competitive person. So sorry in advance if my thumbnails are maybe a little bit clickbaity. But just know that if they are, it's going to be relevant to what is happening in the video. It's just that my emotion and the... Thumbnail might not be as strong as my emotion in the video itself, but sorry, not sorry. <laughs>
So something else that I noticed about myself that I wasn't even really aware that I was doing is that I'm extremely defensive. And sometimes when I read the comments, my first instinct is always to be defensive and explain why I don't like something if someone is like maybe recommending me a product or it could be something so small and stupid as someone being like, hey, you should try out this product. And then I know that that is a product that I'm not going to like, so I write out this like whole caption being like, I don't like this product because of this and this and this, instead of just being like, thank you, maybe I will look into it, you know? Like, I don't need to constantly explain and defend myself and tell someone why I don't like something when they're just trying to be nice, you know? Like, I need to just kind of shut up and be like, you know what, maybe I will check that out, even if I don't want to check it out, you know? Even just like hearting their comments and saying thank you, like, I think that's better than me trying to explain away my thoughts for why I maybe don't like something, you know? Like, there's just no point in that. So it's something that I've found myself doing a lot more lately, just like being nice about the comments or just being like thanks for sharing or thank you for your opinion or I'm glad that works for you or just I don't need I don't need to spread negativity I don't need to tell anybody why I don't like something if they didn't ask for my opinion you know so the next thing is something that I feel like a lot of creators really despise and that's the fact that if you're not first up with a video on a new product, uh, you're probably too late to the game. And that's honestly one of the things that I love the most about YouTube because I love the hustle of trying to be the first one to put up a video on a new product. Like I find it to be so exciting and thrilling and I get so much adrenaline from knowing that I'm one of the first people to put up a video on something. It always just makes me really excited and giddy and just like warm inside when I know I have the first video or one of the first videos up about something. And I also know that it's good for my channel so whenever I know I have something out for delivery it's like all I can do that day is just like sit there and wait for the package and then immediately go film and then immediately edit and put up the video and it just makes me really excited and I just think it's super fun and obviously I'm very lucky to live in the States and be able to get stuff to me very quickly if I lived anywhere else like that would have been super hard to do but you better believe that I am going to take full advantage of living here and having those opportunities to be able to review stuff very quickly and I also know that you guys appreciate that so I feel like it's kind of like a win-win for everybody you know and the last thing that I've learned from being on YouTube is that Despite all of the negative things that kind of comes along with YouTube, which to be fair for me is not that much yet, even though I'm definitely getting more negativity and more negative comments now that my channel has grown, but you know what? It's fine. I've been through that before. Um, I used to be a professional poker player. I don't know if a lot of you guys knew that, but I used to be pretty famous in the online world of poker and I got a lot of shit on a lot of forums back in the day. So I like been through all of that. I have pretty tough skin. I can deal with negative comments. It's fine. So despite all of the negativity that might come along with having a YouTube channel, starting my channel is the best thing I've ever done. I'm just I don't know, I wake up with a purpose every single day and I'm excited to get up in the morning. I'm excited to film. I'm excited to talk to you guys. I've met so many amazing friends from being on this platform that I am so grateful for and I just I don't know this just makes me so happy and I'm sure you guys can tell just from my videos how much joy I get out of making videos so that's going to be the 10th thing on my list um, if you have a channel I would love for you to do this I would love to hear your thoughts because I think this is very interesting and I think that everybody is going to have different answers to this tag. So if you do have a channel, please do this. I will tag a couple of people down in my comments section as well as on Instagram if you guys want to do this. Also, don't forget to check out Leora's channel and her video, which will also be linked down below in my description box. So thank you so much to you, Leora, for wanting to do this with me. I absolutely love you. I think you are an amazing human being. And thank you so much to you guys for watching as well. If you want to see some other tags that I've done, I'll pop a few up on the screen so you can go check those out as well if you want to. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.